So we talk about an asymptotic approach to the Alexandra transform. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so it's obviously an uh, honor for me to be here, and I owe a tremendous amount to Joseph being his student. And um, but uh, so I was reflecting on. Uh, uh, this and actually also uh, Dennis asked me if there is a particular sort of advice that influenced me the most and I couldn't re recall one single um, event like this so uh, I recall this um, quote from someone that we are mostly influence our children not by what we teach them by, but by what we are and so I think this applies in this case and uh, well uh, Joseph kind of represents for me many uh, things but uh, one of the things is you know um, which is kind of important in this age of relativism that kind of uh, Joseph kind of radiates this uh, feeling that there is a um, way to look at things which uh, make them fit, make things elegant and uh, making sense and this you can call this way of looking things the right way and even if it's very hard to reach it that's what one should be striving for and because I um, um, that's a great inspiration, uh, at least for me. Okay, so I'll uh, um, talk about uh, some uh, story uh, that actually started uh, from um, a remark that uh, Joseph made to me on one of his Fridays, uh, we usually, uh, when we usually held our seminars. Um, so. Um, and uh, so, so it was probably 95 and 96, and the remark was um, about um, um, the relation between um, <coughs> functions on SL2 F, where F is a, a periodic field, so a non Archimedean local field, and it's asymptotic cone. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, where X is the space of uh, matrices uh, of rank one, so trace, uh, so, yeah, so it's uh, so, uh, Well, and let's say uh, A is not equal to zero. Um, so basically, he do something like this for me. So this was the SL2, and this is X. And the idea is that X is the asymptotic cone. And uh, we're going to compare the functions on the two spaces by um, looking at the asymptotics as the behavior at, an, at infinity where the two pictures sort of become closed. But so, OK, so to. Uh, uh, explain it more properly. Okay, so let me first fix some notations. And um, so, um, yes, and uh, so, so the point is that uh, th th this is related to the famous second adjournments that was discovered by, I think, Bill Kesselman for uh, uh, admissible representations and one uh, was famously generalized um, by Bernstein. But okay, so yes, yeah, so let's uh, let me introduce this more systematically now. So yeah, I'll, I'll say now. So yeah, so uh, again, f uh, is already here, uh, and uh, in general, g will be uh, a reductive <coughs> algebraic group. Well, maybe uh, over. F and G will be G of F. Um, and yes, so we'll uh, write C or C, C infinity just uh, locally constant on this. Uh, infinity stands for smooth, stands for smooth, but for in this context, uh, smooth just means locally constant. And let's say we work with some 
um, characteristic zero field. Well, 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 let's work with C, but we won't use analysis, so it can be arbitrary. Um, algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Um, uh, so um, um, I will also uh, uh, use this, um, yeah, so we'll have a standard notation, so we have a, a parabolic, maybe I can write it, write it in G, so it's parabolic, which can be written as LU. Um, and, um, okay, so let me just uh, uh, make this uh, statement. So, um, uh, so let X be the space of G mod U times G mod U minus modulo L. So U, U minus is the opposite parabolic. So uh, maybe if I need to uh, emphasize the dependence of on p, I will write p. And uh, as you know, everyone can see, you know, uh, rank one matrix is a pair of vector and a covector, and uh, vectors basically run over the space of G mod u. And again, there was a quotient by the common scalar, so this is the same as x. B, where B is, of course, the group of upper triangular matrices. Okay, and so uh, without uh, further ado, let me just uh, state this theorem. So this is, appears in my paper uh, uh, with David Kashdan. But again, as I already, and the paper is um, relatively recent, maybe from, well, already not that recent. Four years ago, but uh, as I said, it's kind of uh, based on uh, idea, uh, old idea of Bernstein. So that there exists a, a canonical map uh, of uh, G times G modules. Uh, from uh, functions uh, on X to functions uh, on G, which is characterized by it being which is, um, okay, let me uh, say, asymptotic to identity. Um, yes, uh, at infinity. So let me, uh, yes, maybe I should uh, make a remark right away that uh, this has been further generalized to symmetric spaces, uh, so by, uh, before I forget this, uh, to symmetric spaces in a, in a uh, work of uh, Yanis with actually in Katash, so circular ridges by uh, circular ridges in Katash. <coughs> okay, so let me uh, explain what this means first and then why it's important. And um, so, um, So let me first. It's void for a torus, right? And G is a torus. Yes. Right. Uh, okay. So let me uh, uh, explain. Uh, so the meaning of this. Let me first do it for SL two, and then the, you know, treat the general case. So let G. B S L two. Well, sort of to be concrete, let's fix a K and be the and congruent subgroup. And congruence. 
so uh, then uh, I claim that there exists a canonical partial bijection. Partial bijections between the uh, SL2 mod Kn mod Kn and X mod Kn mod Kn. Uh, so uh, uh, let's just work with the matrices. And so if I um, have here, so I have G in Which is a matrix in SL2. <coughs> and suppose that uh, the uh, minimal valuation, so minus n is the minimum of the valuation of uh, A, B, C, D. Then it's clear that, uh, well, okay, so, so, so I claim that if capital N is more than N, I think it's just enough that it's more, but it's, what I really need is that it's true when N is much, much larger than N. Um, so uh, then uh, the coset, uh, so KN, JKN is determined by uh, sort of G modular uh, with the uh, so if pi in F is a uniformizer, then it's uh, modular pi to the power minus n plus n, right? So the first n uh, terms. Um, <coughs> so if it's uh, equal characteristic field, then it's the first n terms in. Uh, this Laurent expansion of the matrix coefficient uh, times uh, net. Uh, and um, and the, 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 the uh, point is that um, if maybe n is more than 2n, then so this is matrix in, uh, well, so, so we have this uh, G bar in uh, matrices. Uh, well, uh, so the canonical I should write this as pi to the minus pi to the minus n plus n ah sorry pi to the minus n uh, times the integral matrices modular pi to the minus n plus n times the integral matrices. So we have this, well, of course, we can multiply out by pi to the n. So this is uh, matrices over uh, this finite ring. But the point is that this matrix, I mean, if you write the condition the determinant is 1, then um, the, uh, for large n, you will see that it will force this uh, g bar to have determinant 0. And so it's actually, uh, so this g bar turns out to be, uh, lie in sort of x of um, or mod pi to the n or, which is also in bijection with um, um, well, let me write as x n mod k n mod k n, where x n is again the set of matrices. In, uh, in X uh, such that the minimal valuation of A, B, C, D is uh, minus N. Okay, so uh, it's, I hope my wording didn't completely uh, okay, conceal this very elementary picture, but. So, uh, in other words, uh, I match this uh, corsets if um, the corresponding additive uh, um, corsets modular 
uh, some lattice intercept. So, um, Okay, so so the the the, the, the uh, again the, the claim is that you have uh, you must have a decomposition. So S L two mod maybe let's say K zero so mod G O four mod. So yeah, well, let me just connect it to the so this is the non-negative integers X mod K zero K zero is just integers, and if you take individual, so let's just write this as union of X. N, uh, sorry, N is already is X, yes, capital N. This is um, union of X, capital N, and, oh, sorry, of G, capital N. Sorry. Right, it's somewhere here. Uh, So G is the uh, union of G N, X is the union of X N, N G, N G class, and uh, claiming that X N mod K N mod K N is nature identified with X over this O mod pi to the N O. And like as, and likewise, G N mod K N mod K N is again X of. So this is this is true for all N, and this is true for large N. Okay. Well, in fact, I think it's enough that N is more than two N. So this is my bijection. Okay, so sorry, sorry, it took so long to convey this completely elementary point. But so let me, uh, yes, and then the asymptotic identity means that for. Uh, no, that's what I said. It's a, a partial bijection. I'm not telling you what the map is. I'm telling you that there is a unique map, which is g times g equivariant, and such that for every small n, for a large enough capital N, this maps. This map coincides with the one given by this bijection. So what is in partial bijection? Well, there are some subsets which are in bijection. Finite huh? Sub finite subsets? No, no, no. I mean, subsets meaning for uh, n, if I take the union of well, so n more than 2n. Complement of those subsets are finite or not? No, it will, be, uh, it will be finite in this case, but it will, be, it will not oh. be finite in this case. OK. okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So the, the spectral counterpart part of this, so if you decompose. Yes, there is some spectral description, but maybe I can talk about it later. So, okay. <coughs> so um, yes, and so, okay, so maybe I still have some things to say here. So, um, so. First, um, yeah, so, so, so maybe the general case. Uh, so meaning in the general case. It looks like you not just define the metric from C of X to C of G, but just from X to G, no? No, again, there is a partially defined map from between this quotient subsets. But, and uh, so my map, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we call this map B for Bernstein, but so again, so it will be true that a delta function of a coset is sent to a delta function of coset sometimes. Namely, if I fix small n and take large capital N, then this will be the case. But it will not be the case in general. So in your picture, there's probably above a certain height, right? Above a certain height, yeah. So, so, so there is some sort of, if you throw it away, maybe I should use another comma. Okay, so yeah, so very briefly, I'll, meaning in the general case, so there is a elegant, uh, well, <coughs> we'll praise it because it's uh, basically David's idea, but so, so there is a G bar, which is the, the continue purchase wonderful compactification. 
And we can say it in general, but let's, uh, for simplicity, assume that uh, G is a joint, so which is not. This can be generalized, but just to avoid some technical points. So, um, and then, so it contains G, and it's a union over, uh, union of strata, which are indexed by a conjugacy class of parabolics by subsets in the, set of simple roots, and I claim that, uh, so, so yes, yeah, so un under this assumption, this is a smooth uh, uh, algebraic variety with, and this is a device with normal crossings, and uh, I claim that X, P, yeah, I mean, the, if P is equal to P I, sort of I is a subset in simple roots, then X, P is the punctured normal bundle to a stratum uh, to G bar I. So punching means that I take the normal bundle and then I remove the normal bundle to bigger strata containing this one in the closure. And um, in this case, uh, just, so you can uh, say that asymptotic to identity means, uh, so, so the map Maybe there's no point in giving a complete definition. It's quite elementary, sort of. Uh, if, uh, you know, you can just naively take the identification between the tubular neighborhood of the zero section in normal bundle and the neighborhood of uh, the stratum in your variety, which, of course, has to have the right differential. The normal differential has to be, di differential in the normal direction have, has to be identity. And then um, I just claim that I mean, for, 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 well, for any, equivalently for some um, identification I of uh, tubular neighborhoods um, um, well, of, uh, uh, we have that uh, our map B of F is equal to I star of F when uh, for F supported on a, a small enough, perhaps smaller neighborhood. On some neighborhood of the zero section. Okay, so this is the meaning of the Theorem and the theory, yeah, you can give a conceptual proof, but uh, using some uh, old results of Bernstein about finite generation in Ethereum property. Um, so there are two tubular neighborhoods. You have tubular neighborhood of the zero section inside the normal bundle, and you have a tubular neighborhood of uh, um, uh, of the stratum in your variety. I mean, tubular maybe is not really. <laughs> Neighborhoods. So which map is it asymptotic? Map from where to where is it asymptotic? Uh, maybe we can talk about this later because the map uh, that was in the theorem and uh, it is a part of this general setting um, again where you have functions on the punctured normal bundle to a strat to say a smooth variety, smooth close up variety in a periodic variety, and you have functions on the variety itself. Okay, so, um, um, uh, so yes, yeah, so there are a couple more things to say about this. So first of all, uh, why is it important? So I already mentioned this briefly, but I wanna say this in general. So I just recall the Uh, second adjointness, and again, uh, so it's um, um, so we have this uh, usual uh, p 
parabolic induction. Uh, uh, so, so we work with smooth representations. The parabolic representations haven't appeared until now. So a smooth of G be the category of uh, smooth representations. And we have the parabolic induction uh, functor from uh, smooth of L to smooth of G. And we have a Jacquet functor, which is just uh, t t t t taking coin variance with respect to the radical of the parabolic. <coughs> and we have kind of from the definitions, you, you can deduce that they're a joint, namely home from M to the induction is uh, G is naturally uh, identified with home over L from Rm to N. But then there is a non-obvious, so, uh, so this is clear from definitions. And this is uh, somehow non-obvious uh, second adjointness. And again, as I said, so it's, uh, I think it was Kesselman for uh, admissible modules and Bernstein in general. Uh, yes. Huh? What? No, no, I didn't state it yet. I was about to state. This is the Fabinius, and I was about to state it. So, uh, uh, so that home from I to P to G and to M is nature identified with the home from uh, uh, N to yes. And so here I need to write uh, R bar and. Uh, it's actually just, maybe I write a bar here, so bar M. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I actually I didn't write the indices here. So, um, well, I bar from P to G is the same as I from P minus the opposite parabolic to G. <sighs> okay, so, uh, and yes, and so I'm just saying that uh, this map is closely related to, to this result and basically you can prove it uh, starting from this map just because uh, so this is related to the theorem namely um, to give a, a junction it's basically uh, equivalent to giving uh, the junction arrow right so if you have so if FG are a joint then you get uh, okay so FG to identity or identity to FG <laughs> depending on uh, the way the induction works. And um, oh, maybe, yeah, sorry, maybe I should say it this way. So it's oh, identity to GF. So it has to work. Uh, and, um, and, huh? Yeah. So you have both this and both this and this, yes. And, uh, uh, and so, um, and if you are given such an arrow satisfying certain Properties, then uh, you, you, you know the functions are joined, and so one no, I maybe need two arrows. You need two arrows, and you check some identity, and you uh, see that the functions are joined. And in our case, uh, so the a functor from uh, from modules to modules is given by bimodules, and so functions with comp uh, support in our spaces are bimodules for G. So they correspond to functors. And you can easily see that sort of functions on G, of course, they correspond to identity functor. And functions on X exactly correspond to this functor, I bar R. So it gives, uh, this arrow is kind of obvious, but this is, you know, not this arrow. Uh, OK, so this is. One of, uh, yes, one of them, in our situation, one of them is obvious, it, uh, and another one is uh, the error I just described in the theorem. 
Um, okay, and so uh, maybe one uh, last comment about this theorem is that Um, so one can wonder, I mean, you have the m map between uh, functions of spaces and you can ask whether, you know, it's given by a kernel, explicit kernel. And the interesting point is that it almost is given by an explicit kernel, namely, I mean, c it can be written as a composition of maps uh, uh, which are either written as an explicit kernel or is an inverse to something given an explicit kernel. And so, so another theorem that uh, we prove is that this map B, okay, let me first write the formula. So it's I inverse composed with A star. So, um, uh, so here um, A is the map from functions on G to uh, functions on uh, and maybe, uh, uh, please allow me to be somewhat sloppy here, but, uh, uh, by not distinguishing measures from functions. In fact, here it's sort of half measures or something. So actually, uh, sort of, they are measures in, in, in the direction of one quarter of G1. Yeah. So, the so, 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 yeah, so, 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 this is actually, uh, uh, yeah, for G and for, for, for X, it doesn't matter because there is a hard form. If you want to be very canonical, it can also be. No, I'm saying that uh, both uh, X and G have a bi-invariant uh, uh, volume measure, I mean, hard measure on G. And uh, you can sort of be very, we can fix one uh, once and for all, but we can also do without it. Uh, so, yeah, so this is just uh, the action map. So the uh, functions on G, they act on this universal principle series. So to a function, you can assign an integral kernel. Of course, it's given by explicit correspondence that you can write you know, G. <laughs> yes. But you usually write C sub C, Yes, I, in, the, in the beginning, I uh, made this abbreviation and said I will not be writing it, but if you insist, I can do this. Um, so, um, um, yes, and so, uh, modulo L, and yeah, so here you have G times uh, G maybe over P, something like this. Uh, so, um, and you do pull push, and, um, and I is the intertwining operator. So I is the intertwining operator. So it doesn't uh, preserve functions with complex support, but still uh, you can, uh, it, it is invertible on appropriate functional spaces. And so you can in, invert it. Huh? So. Oh, oh, okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a twang operator going from functions on uh, G mod U to functions on G mod U minus. But yes, here, here we have to uh, maybe drop the condition of uh, 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 finite support. And in fact, uh, you, you can also extend it to uh, sort of do twang operator in the second variable. Actually, yeah, if it's a second variable in my notation, maybe. This way, so. so where we drop the condition of complex support? The entwining operator doesn't preserve complex support. So from G mod U times G mod U minus module L. Um,
Okay, so uh, yeah, so let me uh, say a few words about applications. I'm confused about the direction of the map. So B went from C of X to yes. C of G, right? Yeah, so, so, so uh, maybe let's call this Y, as we're doing the paper. So this kernels on the principal series live on Y. So, uh, oh, you're right. So, sorry, I actually was doing better yeah, the first time. So, let <laughs> me, thank you. It's, uh, okay, it's, I restore the minuses and then it's going to be like this. Okay, so now it's, now it's good, I think. Huh? A just pull back and push forward. Yes, and I is also pull back and push forward, but I inverse is not. Well, I mean, it's. So, I is always right, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I went from uh, uh, sort of y to x. So uh, I inverse went to from x to y. I mean, of course, it's functions. So. Why is the way the integral uh, uh, the integral kernels live? And uh, I inverse went from uh, functions on x functions so on y. Uh, so so I, that's fine. I start on x. So I go to uh, to y, and then a goes to from g to to y, and so a star goes from y to g. So I'm okay. Define y one 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 regularization to define huh? a. No, I don't do any regularization. So I just uh, no, I just do you know I apply. There is no regularization. So I, um, and it, it's not analytic. So so uh, yeah, I mean I just drop. Uh, so, so I is defined as a map on from functions to sort of some functions without complex support, <laughs> and I avoid doing analysis. So I mean if I uh, import impose the appropriate support condition, which I don't want to uh, discuss now, then I becomes invertible. And so that's the meaning of this. Yes, well, and this is a composition of two maps which do not have this property. So it is not like, a priori, it's not easy to, at least I don't know how to, you know, directly show that this property is preserved. Yes. Is defined to be the map from the second adjoinders. Does theorem, the second theorem follow formally or not? Uh, I, th I think so, yes. I have to. Yes, I think so. So, we don't have any u minus here, only u. Right? So, or what? Uh, well, uh, where? I mean. So, there is a. Uh, well, in, in the definition of x, there is a u minus in definition of. In this, no, in this formula, there is one minus. Uh, in the definition of A? In definition of A, there is no, no, minus. no, no minus. No, it's just kind of, again, the uh, action map which takes functions to uh. OK, so I want to uh, talk about applications and then shift theoretic sort of. Did, did you answer Dennis's question? Yes, I, I think that I uh, probably, yes, I have to. It does not follow, right? It does follow. It does follow. So, uh, but uh, yes, I have to. So, um, okay, let me uh, much time, but sort of. So one, uh, actually, uh, I will give an honest application. But the first will be sort of a vague remark. It's um, more than an application. <coughs> it's maybe sort of announcement of an application. Uh, so uh, I think that the fact that this asymptotic property of this map, it's kind of closely related to, to local uh, trace formula. And somehow the fact that this truncation procedure kind of uh, works and leads to meaningful results which can be described in terms of parabolic subgroups, I think is closely related to this asymptotic property that somehow you have truncation on the group and truncation um, on this um, asymptotic cone and they're kind of compatible. And so 
And uh, so we are, uh, there's some work in progress, which I admit we have, I have announced many years ago, but it's still, uh, I still plan to finish it. And so there's some uh, uh, joint work with Kashdan, so application to trace formula. To, well, an algebraic kind of treatment, because that's what we like. Uh, oh. and, and yes, I think it uh, should be related to Yanis's talk also. But, uh, so with Kashdan in progress. Uh, and uh, the second application is uh, very concrete and uh, took much time uh, uh, to, to talk about it. And actually, this is a, a recent joint paper with uh, Joseph and David. Uh, and yes, I'm happy. It allowed me to reduce my Bernstein number to one, finally. Uh, so. Uh, uh, so uh, it's um, the Lean Lustig, uh, it's application to study of the Lean Lustig duality and Ober Zelvinsky um, Zelvinsky involution. So let me uh, state very briefly. So um, there is a complex that, so if M is a smooth representation of G, uh, then uh, you can form this um, complex. M goes to sum over conjugate class of parabolics of uh, core rank one uh, of uh, I, P, G, R. G, M, and then you can do the same. So, so there are these junctions arrows, and if you put appropriate signs, you will uh, make it into a complex. And um, and so theorem. Actually, this is a theorem that uh, again I we learned the statement from. Joseph as a graduate student, and then in my thesis, I proved it by some more roundabout way using uh, computification of a building. But there is a much neater proof uh, uh, just dealing with geometry of a uh, wonderful computification, which is explained in this paper. And so the theorem is that so for M admissible, there's a generalization for non-admissible, but let me just uh, save time by presenting it here. So we have an uh, so R home over G from M to functions on G is uh, computed by the linguistic complex. So I, I, I will call this complex the linguistic of M. Uh, and so here the contra gradient representation, just a smooth dual. And uh, so idea of proof uh, uh, is um, as follows. So uh, basically we write, uh, so these maps uh, um, can be also, I mean, we have this, uh, so consider a complex of bimodules. So, so, so something that, uh, yeah, I uh, just forgot to mention one term that uh, we have uh, this pa uh, partially defined map between functions on uh, empiric manifold and on the normal bundle, we call it the cost specialization map. So there is this cost specialization complex That uh, uh, whose terms are just exactly the spaces um, I wrote. So in the so there will be C of G, and then there will be sum of C of X P for P of core rank one, etc. 
cetera. And then, so it's a complex of G by modules, and you can dualize it. So just uh, so get also the dual, I mean the smooth dual specialization complex. So C prime of G to um, just, <clears throat> and so it turns out, well, this is quite easy. So this by modules, but they're injective as modules. So you can, uh, so if it was a resolution for the functions with complex support, we could just, it would be the end of the argument. We could have just computed our home. Um, yeah, if it were. Of course, we have C of G sitting here. Uh, but yeah, the point is that this is not a resolution. We actually don't know what its cohomology is. And um, it, this doesn't even lie in the kernel. But we can uh, define another complex, which is a quotient of this one, and for which, um, as long as you are homing from a um, <clears throat> admissible module, the homes don't change, and the x don't change. And then, and, and that is just the cousin complex of the constant shift on G bar. So we have another complex. And so I have another complex. Uh, so you just take the constant shift on the wonderful compactification. You use the stratification that I de described. And um, um, so, um, uh, so we have a resolution. Uh, so if J is extension from, so it's kind of shift theory, but in its most elementary uh, setting, it's just it's totally disconnected spaces. So we have a resolution for J a uh, shriek of CG, and then it goes to the constant shift on G, and this is g goes to the sum over, well, cardinality of phi being 1 of uh, CG bar I. Um, actually, yeah, we need the, yeah, the closed stratum here, strata here etc. And it turns out that, uh, you know, it's quite, quite elementary, but this is clearly a resolution. And again, this is, turns out to be a quotient of this complex. And uh, it, passing to this quotient doesn't change x from admissible representations. OK, so uh, this is some elementary geometric picture. And, and yes, and uh, so there are two corollaries that uh, one to sort of this problem that was already solved by Anne Maria Baer a long time ago that uh, for reducible representation, by an argument that I think was invented by uh, Joseph a long time ago, uh, so is that delineistic of M has cohomology in one degree, which is irreducible if M is irreducible, so it defines an involution actually on a set of representations. Huh? In the of the sequence? Of G bar, yes. Cohomology in one degree. And it's irreducible if M is irreducible. And again, there's other things to say. And then again, this was uh, again done by Aubert uh, in the 80s, I think. Right? And, um, and another corollary, which uh, for, for those who are interested in CR functors, so you can consider the derived category of um, representation of uh, smooth representations, but with admissible cohomology. Uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, um, has uh, that this category has a ser functor, which is isom uh, isomorphic to delineistic, maybe with some shift, which I forget. Um, okay, so uh, uh, so I meant I don't have much time left, but uh, 
I meant to also talk about Uh, shift theory. So, um, so the thing, the, the point is that uh, there are similar uh, results, uh, not just about functions, but about uh, well, d modules and perverse sheaves. And uh, again, so. Uh, I only contributed to the sort of very first result in this direction, and then um, um, uh, so there was a later work by uh, uh, my former student uh, Chen and uh, Sasha Yomdin, and also by Dennis's student Simon Schiller in a different context. So, um, so let me just. Uh, uh, make this uh, statement. Uh, so, um, in fact, <coughs> uh, so there is this, um, so maybe I should first comment what similar means. So, uh, uh, I mean, there is a standard sort of uh, uh, procedure that you can replace uh, functions on a uh, variety by d modules or sheaves on this variety, and then you, uh, r maps given by a kernel um, replaced by uh, maps uh, given by the same kernel. So that's all uh, good. But so the question is, what you are going to uh, replace by this asymptotic property? So uh, so uh, this cost specialization is re well. Is replaced by uh, nearby cycles, sort of asymptotic uh, current, uh, property is um, replaced by nearby cycles. Yeah. So first, uh, I, now I, 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 I'm talking about geometry of the fine dimensional group, and again, uh, there are results, some results about loop group, but I think there is still a lot to understand there. So, okay. So maybe I'll just state the results and just remark that, uh, yeah, maybe I should also um, have mentioned that there is a related work of uh, Drinfeld and his student Jonathan Wong, but. Uh, uh, um, who are studying the inverse intertwining operator, which already uh, made its appearance. But, uh, so, I mean, I just <laughs> recall this because kind of Jonathan insists that it's uh, the more fundamental object is the uh, adjoint uh, operator B star. Well, I mean, of course, it's just a matter of taste. And so, so I'll just uh, recall this theorem that was written there and, and, and erased. So uh, I, I said that B is uh, inverse A star and formally uh, passing to a joint. So I see that B star is A composed with I inverse. Kind of a joint to intertwining is again intertwining. Kernel has this property. So, um, okay. And uh, now I just, um, so the following theorem uh, was uh, first, uh, I mean, for D modules uh, was proved by, uh, in my paper with uh, Misha Finkelberg <coughs> and Victor Ostrich. And uh, then uh, for, <coughs> In the more geometric context of just uh, perverse sheaves, was proved by Chen and Yomdin. Um, so, um, so we can consider the um, conjugation equivariant sheaves or complex of D modules on G, um, and. Um, but uh, kind of uh, interestingly uh, enough, I mean, this isomorphism that I'm going to write, which will be parallel to this, will only be 
valid on the subcategory of character sheets, which I will not have, uh, which I don't have time to define. And then, uh, so there is a, a kind of a specialization uh, or nearby cycles functor from D modules on a variety, uh, on an open part of a variety to D modules on the um, punctured normal bundle. So this is my uh, replacement of B star. And um, I claim that this is functor is isomorphic to well, the action functor, which I think doesn't need any comments, just given by the same correspondence, and intertwining functor. So the only um, uh, point here is that, okay, so we are considering functors given by correspondence, but so you, you pull back on the smooth morphism, then you can push forward into a different weight, morphism is not proper, and the point is that you have to do it in a different way. And, and I mean, the, the reason sort of I inverse is replaced by, maybe I'll put it the other way. So, so I do A, A shriek and I lower star. So this means that I uh, push down here using the uh, direct image of support and I uh, push down here using the star um, push forward. And so remark is that on the appropriate category sort of I star is inverse to I shriek. So that explains explains this. And okay, so this has applications to this uh, studies of character shifts, which I don't have time to talk about. And again, I should mention that in the contents of loop groups, um, there is a, a result by uh, Simon Schiller, which uh, involves, and I think proving a conjecture of Yanis, uh, uh, that, uh, but um, my understanding is that he kind of, it's a very beautiful result, but it's kind of very partial result. It just uh, observes that some functions which appear from our map, they also, a trace of Frobenius functions um, attached to some sheaves obtained by nearby cycles for degeneration of bond G. And um, I, I sort of hope that there is a more kind of, um, that there is something uh, resembling this, some sort of isomorphism of functors in the loop group setting, which I think is still not known. Okay, so maybe I'll stop here. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. So you're saying that this map given by specialization of the level of functions is, is a composition of, well, as just we wrote, A. Yes. I inverse yes. A. So this is a map between spatial functions. Here it's uh, functors between D -E not all D, not all sheets, but between. No, that's, yeah, that, that's a good question, but I. Uh, What's the ideology behind? What's the analogy? I'm not sure I have a good answer, unfortunately, but. Uh, um, so if you know, if I'm, if I should, if, if I need to go into some sort of philosophical speculations, uh, um, so uh, seeing some sort of, uh, I expected this correspondence uh, between uh, results of functions and, you know, this type of result for sheaves, you know, it, it should only hold for sort of spectrally finite sheaves, both in this finite dimensional uh, setting and a loop group setting. Uh, but yes, maybe we should discuss it later. Yeah. Okay. So this result about G modules, are they very clever? No, 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 sorry, D -mo I, I'm sorry about not being clear about this. No, this result about D modules is proved over C. It has not, I mean, I should have said this, I'm sorry. Okay. And then another question. So you started with a beautiful picture of hyperboloid and the cone. Yes. So now delta function on hyperboloid goes to some generalized function on the cone, right? 
Yes, that function at the point. Huh? Uh, the, the function at one. Just, yes. Yes, this. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good question. So, so maybe first I should uh, say, and yeah, this is actually the uh, uh, kind of direction that uh, I think Greenfield uh, and his student really looked into. So, so first of all, it's kind of formal uh, corollary of what I just said is that if you apply B star, yeah, thanks for this, great question. Just for this generalized del del delta fu of generalized function, which is delta function, the unit element, then this is nothing but the kernel. So this is the, let me just write in words, this is the integral kernel for the inverse intertwining operator. For, well, let me I write I inverse where I is a map from uh, functions on G mod U to some sort of functions with some support condition, which I don't discuss, on G mod U minus. Because so, so that's where, I mean, it's an L invariant map, so the integral kernels would lie on the product modulo L, which is what, exactly what my X is. So, uh, so for example, one uh, property that, I mean, to answer a simple question, the one you asked, uh, which is also kind of not obvious, but that's something that uh, proved uh, basically in our paper or some equivalent form, is that the support of this, so yeah, let me call it K maybe, that the support of K is bounded, and meaning it's um, relatively compact. So, 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 so in, in, this, in the case of SL2, it's just bounded in matrices. So it's not compact in X, but it's bounded in matrices. That's your symplogic condition, right? That's basically follows from a symplogic condition, and it can be proved in general. And so next, um, so one sort of, I think it can be related to uh, uh, stocks of uh, sort of icy shifts on this loop spaces, and this is related to this Yanis conjecture and uh, Schroeder's work, but I'm sure I can, I, I know it will say more. I think it's a very interesting question, but uh, no. maybe Yanis can comment there. No, yeah. Yes. So, uh, maybe you can say something about what the loop group analog of the degeneration to symplectic code? <laughs> no, so the, the analog, I mean, yeah, I think this is, I think there actually should be different answers to your question. And the uh, answer w which kind of, the approach that, uh, uh, um, is uh, taken in this pa paper. So can you name the, the author? Simon Schuder, you know him. So he uh, is that uh, kind of, well, they work with the global spaces, which kind of model with local spaces. And then, you know, you have the degeneration of bond G. Yeah, maybe I should have said I kind of, uh, that's not very far from what I did say, but again, so you can actually, th uh, well, I mentioned that these are uh, uh, punctured normal bundles, but of course there was a degeneration to two normal cones. So uh, these things, from what I said, it's clear that these things are degenerations of G, and there is like, actually a nice theory about the degeneration in Winberg semigroup. So this is particularly clear in the SO2 picture because you know you have a family determinant is equal to lambda. So so so, okay. so there is a degeneration G to X. So we can just talk in terms of the degeneration. And um, so similarly, there is a degeneration of uh, bond G, which you can explain this way, uh, and I won't be able to say more because sort of bond G is uh, home from, uh, of course, bond G, I mean on a curve C. And then algebra, complete algebraic curve C. And uh, this is home from C to uh, the classifying stack point mod G, which we can suggest we write as G mod G mod G. And then there is this, um, you can uh, similarly consider sort of one, uh, so, so this will, uh, yeah, so, so this degenerates to home from C to X mod G mod G, something like this. 
so, so, so this is this is the approach taken there. But I mean, maybe there is also some local model. But I can't say anything. What do such forms specify, like geometrically? Yeah, you can uh, describe it. And I mean, so for SO two, it's uh, well. Anyway, I mean, you can. It's an exercise that Dennis can solve for you if you can. Dennis can give you some hints. <laughs> 